I'm going to talk with Gary Blem from Israel Premier Tech, and he's going to just talk through some of the details of the Factor Team bikes. We've been friends for several years now, and what I enjoy about Chris is his passion for, for racing, his passion to want to win bike races, and um, that's kept me going over the years as well. And it's always been fun to work with a guy like that. You know, he's uh, kept me busy and very entertained, uh, some days uh, a little bit more than others. I've been very fortunate to work with one of the, the, the stars of, of world cycling, you know, yeah. a guy who's uh, made history in the sport, and I'm very lucky. wonder if we can talk about 2023 and how it varies from last year. What's new this year and any big innovations? Uh, we've just got a new handlebar that we've launched, um, more aero bar from Black Ink and um, the frame is still Astro, just a slightly different uh, paint scheme on it but uh, for the rest it's still stock standard. We've, what we've changed on the bike is the FSA cranks so we still got the ceramic speed, bottom bracket, um, and on some of the bikes we have the pulley wheels, but all in all, it's it's remained the same other than 12 speed. Last year we were on Shimano 11 speed, this year on Shimano 12 speed, mm -hmm. and uh, with FSA as a new partner. So no, we're really happy. We have Celia Italia that's been a, a good sponsor of ours for several years now. And for someone who's got such a long history with Pinarello from your years at Sky and Ineos, mm. what was it like making a big switch a couple of years ago when you? switch teams. The bike assembled pretty much like the Panarello would assemble, but the biggest uh, adaption for me was disc brakes. Disc brakes was the hardest part. You know, uh, we came from rim brake with Ineos. Uh, we stayed with rim brake as long as possible. I know they've changed now to disc brake. So uh, when I joined the team, it was it was hard. It was hard. Uh, we had several issues with disc brakes. Um, just the reliability of, of the discs themselves, you know, we have discs warping, you know, brakes are rubbing and uh, just to overcome those issues. And I must admit, you know, like with the new 12-speed group set, they have sorted most of those problems out now, so. I know, well, at least I read that Chris was reluctant to make switch to disc brakes, but then he bought shares in Factor, which is basically a disc brake only fleet. Can you tell me uh, why there was that reluctance and also maybe while we're on that topic, why is it that uh, Ineos resisted for so long? I think weight. Weight was one of the big factors. Mm -hmm. Weight and, and reliability of the product. So, you know, if anything new is launched, generally it takes a, a few years for the teething problems to be ironed out. And I think Ineos were just waiting for that. And um, as you can see, when they jumped on board with disc brakes, they jumped on board as soon as uh, Shimano went 12 speed. So, because the, obviously the, the 12 speed group said, uh, the small uh, issues they had with uh, 11 speed, they managed to resolve and um, no, nah, it's a solid group set. We're really happy. <clears throat> Sorry, the weight's been reduced because they've got wireless now. So, and now you can get a disc brake bike for instance, our factors can, uh, you know, we can build a factor enough for Chris at 6.8 kilograms with this brake. So we can have it on the legal limit. And the FSA cranks, how do they differ from the Shimano ones? Heavier, lighter, stiffer? Last year we had rotor, so, um, and to change over onto FSA. No, you know, it's hard to say because um, we're on 12 speed now, you know, so everything is different. But speaking right now, this is our first race. Yesterday was our first event with the with the cranks and really happy to be honest really really happy yeah. so i think reliability is there and um uh, let's see what happens for the rest of the season in 
internal cabling, obviously. If you look at bikes from five, six, seven years ago, they positively uh, like parachutes, don't they? They do. Um, those were the easier days in cycling for mechanics. And now it's become really, really uh, time intensive. But the beauty about it is, especially now with the new 12-speed group set, you don't have electronic cables to the, to the levers. You just slide them on and the only thing you do is connect the brakes. So it's made it a lot easier for us, a lot quicker to build it. Um, like you mentioned before, all the bikes have gone aero. Every brand's gone aero and it's, it's time consuming to build it. But once it's built, you've got a really fast bike. So um, we've, we've managed to actually get the time down on this one now. So it's a lot quicker to build them than uh, last season. Last season, I would say on average, it took about four hours to build a bike versus a rim brake bike would take you in the region between an hour and hour and a half, fully oh. built and measured. And now this brake, 11 speed, was about four hours and now we can do these in about two hours. And during the off-season, you built how many bikes? Uh, we just came from a camp now. We had we had 60 bikes, no, 90 bikes we had to build. And they're still building, but we're not finished building because uh, each rider gets four race bikes and uh, two TT bikes. So we have quite a number of bikes, 120 bikes we need to assemble. But we built 90 of them so far. In, in the old days of rim brake, you could build five bikes a day. When uh, this place came out and the way the cables are, are routed internally, uh, it really increased their time to, I would say, about five hours initially. And the more you built, you became a little bit quicker. But now a 12 speed has definitely got us on the mark now. So we've got the time down. Yeah. But that's why you see a lot of the teams now have got a lot more mechanics mm -hmm. working for them. You know, in, in the old days, I think most teams had between six to eight mechanics. Now most teams have. 12 to 14 mechanics working on the team now. So it's really, um, uh, how can I put it, it's time consuming. You know, this breaks, if you look at rim brake, setting up rim brakes, getting them sorted would take you average about two minutes. To do a proper job with this brakes is about half an hour if you want yeah. to do a real proper job on that. So, what did you do to stop the walking of the rotors and different things that you were having issues with? Or you uh, just think it's smart or improve their products? Yes, uh, that was one of the reasons as well, and also they've also increased the distance on the on the pistons as well, so it gave you a little bit more clearance. So if there was a bit of a warp, it's not going to be as noticeable as what it would be on the 11 speed. Okay. You said you could get the bikes down to 6.8 pretty easily. Is there, what are the tricks that you've done over what's the production model? What's the pro team doing that, that others might not? Well, our frames are pretty light. Our frames are actually exceptionally light. Um, that's one thing. Uh, there's some tricks here that I cannot discuss too much, but... <laughs> and then another way to get it down is it depends on the tires that you're using. It depends on, on the wheels that you're using. So with the wheel and tire combinations, certainly you can get the weight down, especially if you use a TT tire, for example. It's a lot lighter than your standard tubulars that you would be racing. So Are you, are you tubeless only now? No, no, we're very between tubular and tubeless. Okay. So we have tubular on our, our climbing wheels and tubeless on our flat stage wheels. There's a couple of questions that I've asked other mechanics that I've done interviews with. And uh, number one is, uh, are the riders reluctant to change tire pressures or are they uh, following the industry, industry trend of lower pressures? Yes, they are. But like, for instance, Chris has gone... Is, is, is added more pressure to his tubeless, which is not the ideal thing to do. So I think it varies from rider to rider. You know, some guys like super soft pressure and other guys prefer a tire that's really pumped to the max. And why so, does Chris go for the harder one? Have you tried to talk him out of that? We have, but I think, I mean, he relies on feeling and, and the responsiveness of the tire. So at the end of the day, yeah, I think it, it, it's to every rider's preference, you know. Yeah. Obviously, the smaller guys are going to run lower pressures and, and uh, the bigger guys or heavier guys slightly more. 
but okay, yeah, uh, it depends on how the tire feels for the rider. You know, if a tire feels sluggish, maybe you add more pressure. If, if it's uh, a fast rolling tire, yeah, if you want a fast rolling tire, then you need to add quite a bit of pressure to it. Yeah. It also depends on the road surface as well. Bumpier surface, you've got to be careful that otherwise, if your tire is too hard, you're going to have a bit of bounce on the tire on the tarmac side. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. um, but yeah, in general, tire pressures is we we our riders are guided by the performance team and they then notify us what tire preferred tire pressures for each rider, wet and dry. And sometimes you need to have intermediate as well, like in Formula One, so yeah, <laughs> because sometimes halfway through the stage, you might uh, uh, have a rain shower. So it all depends on the weather. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks very much, Darius.